hope this is recording uh biscuits from heaven back with another video and um my hairline looks fucked up of course i haven't picked it out but uh I'm getting a cut pretty soon so <sighs> i feel bad i don't do more of these videos i mean I, I had a pretty successful one my last video um and i just uh, i don't know but I'm graduating very soon, so I'll have more time to do more content. We'll just go from there. Um, as you can see by the title, this is a JoJo-related video. I believe my first JoJo-related video since uh, the end of Jojolian, which I think was in the first quarter of the, the year. Um, if you're hearing that at, at wearing down, uh, it's my PS4, which is just fucking busted at this point. Uh, it, it works fine. It just... That fucking just injects my disc for no reason. Uh, I would turn it off, but I plan on going back to JoJo after I finish this. So, JoJo, um, part six has finally been animated. Um, I'm still shocked that they had 12 episodes ready to go, but they got them done. Um, but I, I feel bad for uh, Japanese watchers because this is supposed to be a monthly drop, like these batches are supposed to be monthly, which means. If it drops the first of every month, which this one did, that would mean that the a global audience had 24 episodes before the Japanese audience had one. And keep in mind, this is a franchise that's largely been carried by the Japanese audience for, I would say, about 15, 20 years before it finally became, uh, you know, relevant in the uh, Western audience. And they kind of just get fucked. I mean, it, it sucks to me. I mean... I feel bad for them because, again, like this is a this is I've said this in multiple episodes pertaining to. I'm trying to stay off. I said that we're related to multiple um, sort of related things that JoJo has probably the least roots in the Western market for any relevant Western anime. Or you think Bleach, uh, even more relevant or, or recently, uh, Demon Slayer. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, um, Black Clover, even a uh, fairy tale. These are like anime Attack on Titan that have very large Western uh, audiences, and you know, uh, curate a lot of content and merchandise for Western people. JoJo doesn't. JoJo doesn't even have an English Twitter. Uh, their only Twitter that I'm uh, cognizant of is entirely in japanese every tweet is in japanese i mean they have they don't curate shit for japan uh english audiences and maybe that's part of the appeal i mean it's i mean the, everything about jojo is is kind of counterculture like it came in the era of the big beefy shown in anime and iraq was like nah fuck that shit after like you know two three parts and it became you know this very quirky um you know, almost progressive in, in a stylization. And I just think that's kind of what, you know, created his niche, but almost, I, I don't know, uh, paradoxically is also, I don't know if that's paradoxically, but it's very it's weird to see that it's so progressive. And then again, it's so not antiquated but just isolated from the rest of the world like it's just it's not it doesn't it, it has collaborations with japanese brands uh clothing uh i think it had a a, a theme park that was with um i want to say it's with a japanese amusement park i mean everything about it is just purely japanese it's not it's not try to spread to the rest of the world uh and that's slowly changing. I mean, you know, I think that eventually, you know, I mean, I know that Funimation sells some merchandise on behalf of it, as it does with every anime that it's licensed to. Um, Fun Funimation or Crunchyroll, one of the two. And I mean, it's just eventually it'll open up. But as it's been, it's always been very Japanese. But that's pretty much just a uh, tangent I, I got off on. But the, the, the main part I want to talk about today is what makes Part 6 special to me. Now... I read part six. It was the first, it was the second part I read because I watched part four. Like I just binged all of JoJo uh, around 2018, I believe, mid to late 2018. Uh, my homeboy put me on to it. It was like part one and two is great. He said, I never watched any part past, past part two. 
okay, let me get on this. I saw it was on Netflix. Um, it was like more obscure on that. Like it was like Netflix was starting to expand into anime uh, with like, stuff like Devil Man Cry Baby. I think they got a new license to stream uh, Attack on Titan. And they were trying to, just like the beginning of them trying to get into anime. I think it was like a Jaden Smith thing or something like that around that time. But they weren't like, you know, like, not all anime on there is getting advertised the same way. And I see this, you know, Joda's Bizarre Adventure, and I was like, okay, I'm starting to hear about this, you know, on the internet and stuff like that. Um, I think by the time I would have gotten into it, it would have been just a few months removed from uh, the end of part four of the anime. So I'm getting into it. I'm, you know, I, I start with, uh, you know, part one and part two. I'm like, okay, part one's cool. You know, it's solid. I think I like part one a lot more than a lot of people did. Um, but that kind of went to the wayside if I got to, you know, part two. I was like, wow, part two is pretty cool. Um, and I don't think I had the the idea that it was like a really, like, standout anime until we got to, like, Caesar being killed. Uh, spoilers. I'm going to spoil a lot of stuff. Like, this is going to be, like, spoilers from part one to part six manga stuff. So, like, there's going to be spoilers. It's going to be spoilers much across the board. If you haven't, like, followed all of the series, like, all of the franchise, I, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, and then I got to, to, towards the end of part two, I was like, okay, this was really good. Um, nothing from part two felt as iconic as Jonathan holding Dio. That was actually a pretty big part of why I enjoyed uh, part one, was just the Jonathan Dio kind of recoup, recoupments? Recoup, I don't know. Then we came back together towards the end of that, that part. That was really cool. But um, I felt the ass pulls of the end of part two was like, okay, this is interesting. And then, you know, I was sorry, like, as I do with anything, I started looking towards, like, the forums and see, like, how people feel about the endings uh, of various, you know, in this way parts of other ways, like, series, entire series. And people were like, well, you know, part two has some ass pulls. You know, people would mention, like, other ass pulls and other parts of JoJo going forward. And it's like, if you don't like the part two ending, you're not going to like the part five ending. I was like, okay. Um, so I get the part three. I think Jotaro gets mentioned like at the, like the very end of the part two closer. Uh, and then jo Joseph, when Joseph like comes back and like is alive, I was like, did I actually kill Joseph? Because like I, I knew that what really introduced me to what, what really was like full on brought me to JoJo's was this guy, The Truth. He's a, a Dokkan anime streamer. His uh, Twitch like sub and um, the other one, like sub and donation or whatever. One was, I think it was. Jotaro using uh it was Jotaro using Star Platinum the World in in part four. When he the first time the first time he uses it um and explicitly says Star Platinum's Awardo to save Josuke. And then his I think sub was the other one was when Dio uses part three uh after coming out from the building and like gets Joseph. And I thought it was the coolest shit of all the time. Like, the the Zawar, though, that shit brought me... Like, that's still my favorite part of JoJo to this day. The Zawar, though, the Star Platinum Zawar, though, was, like, the thing I want to look for the most. I was trying to... Like, I played the fuck out of the uh, the Zawar, though, moment before I even got to part three. Because I was just... I'm not good at waiting. I'm delayed gratification. It's not a concept in my mind. So I just played the shit out of that constantly. And... It said Joseph dies. Like if you watch that YouTube video, it says Joseph dies in the title, and I was like, okay, so this is Joseph. This is the same Joseph, I'm sure. I was like, oh, what the hell happens? Because at the end of uh, the the I think it was the Wamu fight or Cars, or the Ultimate Cars fight, he goes up in the space. You think he's dead, and like one more ask, he comes back, of course, at his own funeral. And I was like, okay, well, that's pretty cool. So then we get to part three. And I think the thing that made, I'm trying to think, like, before this, like, part three the, the beginning was, like, kind of like this school thing where, you know, you have a cocky on one, it's in the same school as Jotaro, and, you know, they have those little moments. The part three beginning is very weird because, like, there's a lot of things that happen in that. This is kind of where like Rocky forgot that becomes very prominent. There's a lot of things that happen in that that do not get brought to the rest of the series. Uh, the only thing it feels I can think of is the fact that, um, like Kaki when he's drawing the building, that's the only thing I can explicitly think of that doesn't come back. But you have that, you have uh Pwn the Ref, this very opposing individual that was another one of like Dio's uh, 
like succubi or i guess succubus is succubus products i guess you know controlled by dio um you can have like this series where it's just jotaro fighting like dio products like okay this is cool and then they get the team together you know you have abdol uh you know jotaro's like this kind of quirky badass and like that was cool because there wasn't anybody with like an edge on their shoulder i mean i guess joseph joseph was kind of like you know, edgy in a sense in the beginning, uh, especially when, like, he's still in, like, the slums with uh, Smokey. You know, okay, but, like, Joseph was, like, you, I mean, Jotaro was, like, you don't even know if this guy's, like, good, per se. He's, like, just a dickhead to some degree. Um, and that was a good changeup. And, you know, the progression of Jotaro into an honorable, veritable human being, that's cool, too. So then you get to um, the Jotaro versus Darby fight. And that was just huge for me. I mean, the I raise my mother's soul like that moment, and then Darby's like, "What? Uh, that shit?" Like you have Abdul like literally choking. Like, it's all some other good moments between those, you know. Um, but that that one right there was like, "This is golden." And I was I became Jotaro Sam for that, and obviously you know, um, Jotaro Joseph and Kakyoin against Dio and Pona Ref, I guess. And then you have like Iggy. I, I really didn't like Iggy until the moment I guess everybody likes Iggy. And that's when he goes to this vanilla ice. And you know, Abdog is like one shot. And then Pono Ref and Iggy have like this very emotional moment. That was that was great. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how people like I think a lot of people become such fans of the personalities and the kind of uh originality, I guess, of part four through you know, so on and so forth. But the way that, like, on, because it's still within, like, the general, like, tough guy shown in tropes, and although it tries to spin in a different way, um, the way that Iraqi retells that buff fighter shown in genre with how much emotion comes out from, you know, Iggy dying, um, you know, Kakyoin getting, like, shot in, in, initially, and then, you know, eventually coming back. Uh, I mean, just the range of emotions that's displayed in there. I mean, you have, like, the everybody drinking uh, moment, drinking, you know, one point uh, synchro synchronously. Uh, you know, Joseph bleeding out, trying to tell Jotaro, you know, avoid the world. Like, you can't beat this. Jotaro being pissed off against D. Like, the range of emotions displayed in Part 3 is still, like, the pretty much i think one of the best ranger emotions you'll see like any of those like super uber fighter type shonens i mean naruto you know naruto when jiraiya gets killed by pain dragon ball when you know vegeta's crimes getting his shit kicked in by frieza i mean going you know so on and so forth i mean i think it stacks with all of those uh quintessential uh, anime moments in the western audience and that's a big reason why part three is the foundation of that series blowing up in America. I mean, people say what they want about, you know, Five and Giorno, but that was a big reason why. And just to go on a tangent from there, or to go to the main point from there, because it's been 13 minutes. What makes Part 6 so cool to me, and I, like I just admit, I'm a Jotaro stan, I'm a Part 3 lover. Part Part 3 is probably my favorite part. I don't think it's the best written one. I think Part 7 is the best written part. Um, I, in terms of like what I would raise like the objectively best parts, I think probably part seven, uh, because I think I think part three ending is one of the most airtight endings. I mean, I know you can say like it's a little bit of fuckery with oh he hits the same type of stand as me, and you know that's, just, but I mean he lends into like he at least leads into that. Like you see what's gonna happen, uh, because it's, everyone sees it, you know, at some point while on the internet, but like. Even if I didn't know that Jotaro taints time stop, like he does at least set some foundation there for that being the reason why. But it, you know, I can see why people think it's a little bit fastful. Um, I would say part seven is the best, the best objective one, and then probably, I mean, I want to say part four because part four is so original. I was like, Slice of Life, after, you know, however many years of part one through three of being like this, you know, fighter shonen, um, 
part four is really well written. I mean, some of the the the, the uh, mystery aspects of it, the uh, you know, it's a, it's a whole genre trying to emulate kind of like this um, killer who's a, who's a killer type thing, and then the end of it with with uh, what's it called? Um, bites the dust, like the the ability he gains after like getting the arrow. I forgot what the name of it is, but. That whole part's really cool. I guess that's something that hasn't been emulated, I think, in, in uh, JoJo since. Kind of the setting back in time and trying to figure out where to break the loop. That was really cool. So I'd say probably part seven. Part I'm trying to be object- like trying to see like how people would perceive things that occur. Probably part seven, part four. I can't. I really can't. Cause the, the first part of part four is just like I, there's nothing that really happens that Matt like. You get to see Josuke's like it's character development, like pretty much from Josuke Jotaro coming into uh, Morio to pretty much like when they get to you know Shigechi and like really forming the the school um, crowd, like the, the school the Morio crew, I guess. But from Kira on is like an actual series, like an actual thing is occurring, and from before that. I guess it's hard to judge because it's a slice of life. Like it's not meant to be like a linear plot, but I, I would say part four is probably the second best written one, and I would say part six. I would say part six to bring everything that part six goes for together. I think part six shoots for more than any other part. There's no part that tries to do as much as part six does, and even if you don't like some of the aspects of it, like the cliffhanger, um. I'm trying to spoil too much of it. Maybe I, a lot of people perceive that that crew, the Parsons crew, as being the weakest, which is fine to me. I think maybe the anime will allow some people to feel, you know, to like the crew more because I don't think Inasuoi. I don't think it, I don't know how to, I still don't know how to pronounce his name. I don't. Think, I don't think Inasuoi is like the most developed character of all time. Like he really is like an extension of. Jolene, in a sense, and at least his relevancy. Um, but I mean, depending on what you consider weather report as being like part of the crew, not part of the crew, I think he is. I would think so. He's he's very well developed as a standalone character. Uh, Foo Fighters is very likable. I mean, she's one of the probably the I would think the the biggest, most well received female in the series, outside of obviously Jolene and maybe like. Maybe yes. No, I would say she's more well received than Yasuho. I would think. I can't think of anyone else who's as well received as uh, Foo Fighters. And then Emporio. Uh, this this here we'll go. For, we'll get into the eighteen minutes. And I'll get to the main point. Emporio. So this is like spoilers. I'm I'm doing spoilers at this point. What really just came to me. I just finished episode five. And what's the coolest stuff to me? I just realized this. Because I forgot, like, I looked over it, but I did remember when she, he gave the bones to Jolene, he was born in the prison. And I don't exactly remember why, I don't even want to spoil it just in case someone, I don't, I don't exactly remember why the guy who killed his mother killed his mother. Which, if you watch the anime, he explicitly says he killed his mother, but I don't know why he did that. I don't, I don't remember why he did it. It was explained why, but I don't remember why. Um, but it is nice the payoff, the ultimate payoff of the entire franchise harkens back to the moment in a, of a part five, where Emporia is having this relationship with Jolene after Jotaro gets beaten down and in essence uh, killed by Poochie, and then we have this moment of reflection where he empathizes because his mother got killed. By the same individual, so and again, I did say spoiler. I, I did say that like three, three, four different times. But and the payoff is the same way that with his mother's bone, Emporio basically saves Jolene and Jotaro, in effect, from White Snake. Spoiler! This is literally the end of the series. Like this is the biggest spoiler possible. You can skip. Probably, like, I guess, maybe two, three minutes in after this. I don't know. But this is a spoiler. <laughs> this is a massive spoiler. 
at the end of the series, the literally the little last thing that Jolene does in the franchise, the the um you know canon Jolene Jolene Cujo is throw weather report stand to Emporio and saves Emporio from the from the ultimate loop. Like it loops back uh with all the canonical part six characters dead and then Emporio's the only one that lives. And because of the stand and because of his own stand, he's able to kill Poochie. Who killed him and killed his mother. Or who killed his mother and killed Jolene. I think that's I I never came to that conclusion before. I read parts of it three years ago and I've read it since then. I've read like the ultimate fight between like Jotaro and Anna Swoy and Hermes and blah 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 against uh Made in Heaven. But I never put two and two together that the reason because I never I, I just never thought why Emporio I never looked it up. I didn't even tried to understand why Emporio was the one picked to kill Puji. But the same way that Jolene got the bone from Emporio, she passed the rights to kill Pucci, the la- literally the last chance they had to Emporio and save Emporio. That was huge for me. I mean, just literally, I just finished re- watching this like five minutes ago. That was massive for me. That that honestly, like, I think the anime alone before that has put Stone Ocean into a different echelon than where it's perceived at. Because maybe people perceive Stone Ocean as being the literal worst part with stands. I think at the very least, even before it was anima- uh, animated, it should have been above part eight. I think people gassed the shit of part eight. I don't, I mean, Gappy is cool to me, right? But Gappy isn't like, <laughs> to me, he's supposed to be like this anagram of like kind of different Joe stars. Um, I forget if he's supposed to. Ref- I guess Giorno. He kind of kind of reflects Giorno in that way, even though it's going to be in part nine. I imagine it's going to be a Giorno kind of copy, because uh, every part in the alternate universe takes like two Joe stars, puts them to one. So there might be two Joe stars in part nine. That's just holding the video, like a Giorno and Jolene copy, or it might just be a Giorno and Jolene combination. Because we have Jotaro in part. That's supposed to be um, Joseph Fume in essence. Um, and also, I think, kind of, uh, Joseph Fume's sister. Oh, y- Yoshikage's sister. Not, not Joseph Fume, Yoshikage's sister. But, I don't know. Um, I just don't think Gappy's, like, I think Gappy's cool. Like, I think he's probably better than Giorno. Giorno's, like, my least favorite Joe Star. Like, the animated, the anime did a lot to make me like Giorno a lot more than I did. I hated Giorno before. Because a lot of people... Gas the fuck out of Giorno. I'm like, this is, dude is not like a top three Joe star from part one to part seven. I was reading part one to one seven. And then even after reading part eight, I still think Gaffy's probably more interesting than Giorno. But the anime kind of makes him a little bit more nuanced. He just seems like basically like a very, a facsimile of Joe's Jonathan with like some Dio type features, like aggression and stuff like that. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. If you, if you don't like Jonathan, I don't know how you like would have Giorno as like top three Joe stars, but you know, whatever. Um, but I mean, you get back to the topic. Like I, I have uh, Jolene is like probably my favorite Joe star. Maybe Jotaro is number one, but I think I can honestly think about the end of this animation. I will have Jolene number one. She was always close, but like just the screen time of Jotaro. Like Jotaro is part three. He kind of puts Josuke on his wing in part four. And then the Josuke, Jonathan, I'm, it's always weird, Jonathan Joseph. The Joseph, Josuke, Jotaro dynamic is like one of my favorite dynamics in JoJo. And then he puts the battery in Koichi's back to get like the the events of part five set. And I mean, he's literally Mr. Joestar. He's the Joestar. And then part six, my whole point of this video, the Jolene Jodo dynamic to me is my favorite dynamic in the entirety of this series. Like that's just, I mean, it's it's the most heart wringing thing that occurs in the entire series to me. You can maybe have uh, Gyro the way he gets sent off while fighting with um, 
Johnny against Poo uh, not Poochie, funny. Okay, maybe, but like I don't I to me Jotaro just has so much like ground in the series. Like it's hard to not have Jotaro and what happens to him in part sits to be just elite. I mean he He's the father, dude. He's like the anti Goku in in um uh, in part in part six. I love him, dude. And then Focus? I'm not gonna edit this, I'm just gonna post it raw. Can you focus, please? Hello? <laughs> okay, well, whatever. We're gonna go on focus for a while. Um, but yeah, so like the whole thing with um with uh Jolene and and Jotaro, I mean Episode five, episode four and five to me are like probably like my. F I don't, I, I don't, I don't rewatch um, episodes with, with with JoJo, so I wouldn't know where to rank it. But like in terms of moments, it has some of my favorite moments in the franchise, and I guess maybe that'll be satisfactory enough for some people. But I really want people to understand that this is not a bottom feeder part. Like this just isn't. This is this is better than part five in my opinion. I know part five's crew is better. I I will say that part five's crew, outside of Stardust Crusaders, is probably the best part or the best crew in any part. I can't think of anybody really. Uh, eh, eh. No, I can't. I can't think of anybody really seeing them. I can't. I can't. It's, it's those two, in my opinion. Um, this shit is still not focused yet. What the hell? Okay, whatever. Um. The scenery, the scenics in uh part five are beautiful. But I mean part six, dude. Part six has some very uh very landscapes that we'll see eventually. And it gets very grand in the in like just like a, a snap. Like it's gonna be in the prison for a while. Like I I would imagine it probably stays in the prison for the remaining this batch. I I think I remember hearing where this batch ends at. I think it's still in the prison. After this batch ends, I don't think they get outside the prison until like probably the middle of the next batch. Uh, I'm trying to remember, but based on where I think this batch ends at, I think they probably won't see the outside, or at least the where they need to go to uh, for quite a while. So they'll probably be the prison for at least another batch, I would say. And uh, but after they leave, I mean, it goes like very quickly. Like it just it speeds up, and the idea of it speeding up is very tangential to the uh, overall like major villain in part six and what he eventually becomes like the idea of speeding up is very important in, in that in that respect uh i don't know where the hell i was talking about the, 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 the uh the relationship great great relationship part five is beautiful uh what day productions has done and really like adding like uh, animating the similarities between jolene and jotaro explicitly like Knocking you over the head with them. I love that because I think a lot of people love Jotaro. So, I mean, it's an instant way to like make people really fall over Jolene, which I think you really don't need much of. Jolene has been gorgeous, uh, personality wise since the jump. I, Faru, has been such an incredible casting of that voice. I mean, she, her range, the way she can go from petulant to serious to emotional you know an emotional wreck i mean she does a beautiful job i'm i for it's, like, it's amazing casting and it's important that jolene is as big as she is because jolene the reason why parts this crew i think is so yeah meh is because they really are just an extension like a kind of a a jumping off point for jolene they are not on their own very interesting characters maybe the anime will do more to make them interesting because it did it with part five I can imagine Hermes being fleshed out a little bit more. Like I said, Weather Report is pretty good for that. Emporio is pretty good. Uh, even though most of his character exposition comes in the way, in moments with Jolene. Like, it's not too many Emporio-only moments in this uh, franchise, but he is an interesting character on his own two feet. And so is Weather Report. Anna um, you know, Hermes, and, you know, I think that's it. It's just those four. And then Jotaro returns eventually. I said spoilers already. Jotaro returns. Everybody knows Jotaro's not gonna die like that. Jotaro's not gonna be brought in to die in episode five. I think everybody knows that. Um, but Jotaro, he he comes back eventually. It's kind of cool. It's some of the things they do with Jotaro. But 
Just somebody else. I feel like somebody else, but I don't know who else it'd be. I, oh, Foo Fighters. My Foo Fighters. Yeah, Foo Fighters. Uh, yeah, Foo Fighters are pretty cool too. But it's just everybody's like an extension of Jolene at a certain point. Like, it's not really anybody that's like, like when you have part three, Pona Rep does this whole different thing and its own different dynamic that's not related to Jotaro. And that's cool. Uh, you know, Joseph is Joseph. You know, we go to part four. Um, and part four is kind of wonky, but part five, you know, Bruno Bucciarati has his own aspirations, you know. Um, I think kind of some of the other guys kind of fall into like an extension of Giorno in a sense, but even Fugo, Fugo literally goes and does his own different thing. Um, the, the police officer, I forgot his name, uh, Abakio, Abakio, he goes, does his like he clashes with the main character and that's cool too i mean it's a different dynamic so it's just all those different things i think part six kind of leads more on the main joe star more than some of the other parts do so i can see why people think their crew is one of the weaker ones but i think they're good enough i mean i was listed like three characters that are like fan favorites in the series right there that are part of the crew so i think i'm gonna end it there 31 minutes uh there's a lot more i can say i can talk about part six forever dude part six is my most underrated underappreciated part at the very least if not my I don't think it's my favorite. It's part three is part three, but I will say, I mean, part three has so much, like, even though part three is made my favorite, it has so much more, like, dry time. Like, there's a lot of shit in part three I don't revisit and just, like, was taken out of my head, like, you know, White Snake came and hit me over the head, too. I mean, the whole, like, traveling from place to place trying to fight, like, or ending up fighting Dio servants. That shit like was not interesting at a certain point. Like I like the, the the baby one was cool. Um, the chick that starts with the M that like seduced Joseph that was cool. I mean, obviously Darby the younger or Darby the gambler. Darby the younger was okay. I like the. I mean, obviously the 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 no 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 yes 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 that that was a fucking iconic moment. But outside of that, there's a lot of like wheat like the fucking gorilla. Like who remembers the gorilla? Really, like outside of it just being a fucking gorilla that like had to stand. I mean, okay. Um Whole Horse was cool. Man in the Mirror. I think that was the stand that he fought with. That was either that one in part five. I forgot which one it was, but um the stand he fought was cool. I don't really remember the guy he fought with, but Whole Horse was cool. Um But I like, it's, it's just it was like it lasted too long. It was like too many of like like, I feel like that's, like, the only part that feels bloated is the middle part of part three when they're really just doing the exposition and, I mean, the, the uh, traveling and all that shit. That, that's the only part that feels bloated to me. And it's not, like, there's not good villains throughout that, but, like, it's just, it's too much. Like, it's probably, like, five episodes too much in part three. Um, But even in the highs, I mean, like, the highs of part three, like, that's, that's the highest you'll see in any part. And all, the, the last thing I will say... The highs in part six, as far as stands go, stand reach, stand powers, um, even something like the, the, the kind of uh, wonky, like, out of the box. Like, he really, like, I think Araki really ran out of some ideas to, like, stand powers. And even with that, that kind of exasperation, like, the shit he, like, throws at the fan is at least interesting. Um, this one that people hate, like, I think people hate one particular stand a ton, and I still don't understand that stand to this day. The two, the, the two or three stand I understand at least, uh, if King Crimson is number one, and then the one that's going to be in this part, you'll understand because everybody will like know it at the same time which one I'm talking about, but it's based on like fate and fortune, and it's just so, it, it just, it's so stupid to me, like, it just, it does not execute it very well. It's, it's one of those like, rocky stands, like he just doesn't explain very well and doesn't draw very articulately, in my opinion, to where you can see what's happening and understand it. So it's not visually comprehensible, and the explanation for it is not very um intelligible, in my opinion. Maybe anime will help that one work a little bit more like a day with King Crimson. Because I think people are at least able to get like the general idea of how King Crimson worked after anime, which a ton of people did not understand that that stand worked in the manga. I can tell you that right now. Because I read the manga before the anime came out, and a ton of people did not get how that stand worked, even though they liked Part 5 and they liked King Crimson, which goes to show you how much people liked, I guess, Diavolo. But 
It's, it's another stand in that kind of same echelon. I'm just like, I don't really get how. You know what? Was the, no, I won't say it. <laughs> I'm going to go over another tangent if I do that. But this is it for me. I'm going to upload this. I hope it's not too laggy. I hope the audio came through because if it didn't. <sighs> but um, I enjoy doing this. I may do more JoJo content. I may do another one after I finish watching The Batch. I'm on episode six right now. I want to do a halfway, like, long video anyway about, like, the first half of The Batch. So I may do another one at the second half, but I'm going to be busy for the next like couple of days. So I have to kind of figure out what I want to do with, with all of this. Maybe I'll uh, get some more shit uh, knocked out. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy this. Um, Parsons is great, dude. Bar Parsons is great, bro.